Swamp is our best defense. Happily, the wildlife are just as keen on attacking the dead walkers as they are the villagers. But the situation here in Valvanor grows worse daily. And each new wave of refugees increases the risk of drawing unwanted attention to this jungle. No Ice Lord scouts who find this village will ever escape to tell the tale. Of that, I can assure you. Also, my men are reinforcing your defenses. Forgive me for saying, but you have some serious weak points. Especially the defenses around that refugee camp of yours. The arrival of the Freeborn Blades and the Red Scribes has greatly improved our chances of survival, Captain. Believe me when I say that we are most grateful to have you with us. Needless to say, your men and the Red Scribes are welcome and free to go where they will. But as for any other newcomers, our gates are closed. You must understand that our food stores are as limited as our abilities to defend our village. Until you arrived, we had but one person who was even vaguely capable of treating our injured. And the case of Prince Orondale was completely beyond her skills. And there is this beast story, doubtless another fairy tale, the fruit of an alcohol-addled brain. Nonetheless, several of the watch have gone missing. Something hidden in these swamps is causing these disappearances, but we cannot risk sacrificing any more of the few men remaining to us on sending patrols. Large groups entail moving chrysalids that are unmanageable. The others quite simply do not return. <sighs> Silence. If I were to listen to everyone, I would need 10 times the number of men I have to verify the truth of every tale. Enough. You must aid me to do this. I am not able to do that. Your endless wailings are unbearable. In the name of... Vulcan? But by the gods, man, what is... This world is condemned. The cold hath invaded its ground, its souls, and its heart. Yet here you stand, weaving your limbs like fish taken from the water. Miserably shuffling about to conserve the illusion of warmth and life, and not feel the passing of your last breath, while I must endure your wailings and lamentations. Pitiful. Vulcan, stop this nonsense immediately! It is not he who speaks. All the fall to ruin about you. Yet you still bewail your loose bowels and vomitings. You cannot vanquish your dead walkers, no more than you can vanquish their necromancer masters. They draw their power from the very heart of the world. They drink it, they suckle it dry. Your only chance to cleanse what your own hath corrupted is to go to the world heart and liberate it from its servitude. The world heart is a myth. A forgotten fairy tale, no more real than dragons or dwarves. A myth. Continue hiding behind thy puny barricades, and thou wilt soon join thy myths and fairy tales. Cease your pretense. I know you have returned to consciousness. What the hell happened? I was just listening to the steward blabbing away with the captain and then... And then you lost control. I don't know, it's like something in my head zapped me so it could use my mouth. But I was still there, still thinking what I was saying. This is not the first time you have felt this presence manifest itself. No. No, it's been there since the temple. It's also in my dreams. I think... Hmm, interesting. It would seem that your body is host to some other entity. And it is clearly a spirit of fire. No kidding. I got a demon in my head. Something of the kind. In truth, I could not say what it is. Not yet, at least. Don't make me laugh. After all, it's your disciples that let this thing out of its cage, right? That has nothing to do with it. Do you have any idea of the implications of this incident? 
If it happens again a couple of days from now, they'll all start spitting and throwing rocks at me. I guess I'll have to watch out. I fear that is the least of your worries. Obviously, you haven't understood. The thing that is inside you, it wishes you ill. There is not enough space inside you for two souls. That demon wants your body. It will control you more and more until it has replaced you completely. Ha! Huh. Thou thinkest I crave the body of a mortal? I am a prisoner here. My place is in the world, heart. It will not hesitate to lie to you, to tell you that which you wish to hear, so that you will allow it to consume you. I never asked for this cage. I never asked to be forced to hear thy every thought. It is I who have been invaded. It speaks to you. Do not listen to it. Cast it from you. If you do not resist, it will crush your soul. Hey, take it easy. One day at a time, okay? I'm gonna take a walk. The Order of the Freeborn Blades is of great repute, and the mercenary does honor to its name. The mercenary's powers are both astonishing and fascinating. The Knight would like to duel with the mercenary, that he may judge the mercenary's strength. Sure, I can never turn down a good fight. But maybe we should take it outside if we don't want to break everything in here. The Knight is honored and bows to his adversary's wisdom. Relmar, wait for me here. I'll only be a moment. Knight hopes that his adversary will not hold back his blows. Oh, you can count on it. The Knight has never before battled an adversary with such power, and he believes that he could be that which is needed to change the course of this war. You fight pretty good yourself. Where did you learn your moves? I can't believe you learned to fight like that in this backwater. The Knight has traveled far and fought many battles. He has only lived in this village for a short time. What are you doing in the middle of these swamps when you could be making a difference on the battlefield? The Knight has fought a great many battles, but he feels he can be more useful protecting those who have nothing left. I have to go. I'm glad we could test each other's mettle. It was fun. Before his adversary rushes off to fight other battles, the knight has a question for him. He wishes to know if the Freeborn Blades would like him to join them. I'm not the one who decides who joins the company, but I can ask the captain for you. He has thought long on it and wishes it would be so. Well, that's great. I'll ask him, but I can't promise you anything. Go there, Powder Man. You still didn't manage to blow yourself up? Pretty quiet around here, huh? Yeah, too quiet for my taste. Do you really imagine the Dead Walkers are going to forget about this place just because this swamp is dangerous? No, but it'll slow them down. Maybe we'll see them coming. Ha! <laughs> you can bet your ass they're already here. There's something in the air that stinks, and I don't mean the locals either. I feel like the Ice Lords are watching us, right now. I have a few questions for you. How are the Freeborn Blades holding up? We left some blood on the stones in the temple, but most of the company got away all right. But if we don't get some new recruits soon, things are gonna get serious. The captain has sent some men ahead to Karaldas. I hope they manage to pick up a few recruits, and they're not too scabby. Is there anybody in this village worth recruiting? See for yourself. There isn't a single man amongst the guards or the refugees that knows which end of a sword you're supposed to hold. We'll just have to wait. And be careful. So, you made it out of the temple then? I did. I suppose my time's not up yet. I guess that'll cause more gossip amongst the youngsters. The eternal survivor. My balls. There are some days when I wish it would be over. I tell you, you'll be the one that buries all of us. Do you think we can win against the Deadwalker army? Against the Deadwalker army? No chance. Now the Ice Lords? That's another question. What do you mean? Only that sometimes you have to try to chop off the head, you know? That bunch of walking corpses wouldn't be any trouble at all if there was no one to guide them. 
I guess you're right. But I don't think that makes the task any simpler. There was a time way back, you know, when there were so many of us in the company, several hundred, that the captain decided to delegate. So he chose two lieutenants. Those two assholes fought over how to share out the men for weeks. They both wanted to take the best men for their group. And the result? We had our asses handed to us by an army that was hardly more numerous than we were. I guess what I'm trying to say is that the dead walkers are just the same. You've got seven bosses, and each one of them wants to control everything. So if we were able to set them against each other... Now you're thinking straight. I don't know how we could do it, but I'm sure that it's possible. A good day to you, soldier. I do believe that today is your lucky day. Really? What are you gonna try to sell me? Sell? Oh, now you're trying to make me feel bad. No, unfortunately I have nothing left to sell. Other than some first-hand information that will surely be of use to you. Information? What information? Hey, you know what? Some kind of reward would be appreciated. It's just that with the war, we have so little left. Here, take this. What do you have? Apparently, the Red Scribes have found a way to win the war. They found someone capable of breathing fire, who's gonna burn up the Ice Lords just by looking at them. I don't believe it. You took my money for that? You fucking with me? I swear, it's true. Please, we're starving. I'll let it slide this time, but don't you ever try to rip me off again, unless you're tired of using your hands. I wanted to ask you, have you ever met the steward? He came to see the refugee several times, but I never spoke to him. I got the impression he couldn't stand us. He's the boss and we're the little people, see? The life of a refugee can't be easy. I've been a refugee for years. Five to be exact. All these years on the road. And believe me, it's never easy. But this village is a pretty good place. The healing house gives us food most of the time, and we're safe. That's not bad. How are things going with the guards? Oh, we don't see them too much around here. They're basically here to guard the village. They don't give a shit about the refugees, so they keep their distance. And I hope for the steward's sake that he's not counting too much on them to keep him safe. I've seen lots of soldiers on the road, but as useless as them, never. You ever hear about a beast that lives just outside the village? Everybody's talking about it, so yeah, I've heard things. But there are animals everywhere out here. You can hear them howling and snarling all over the place during the night. But I do believe there is something bigger and meaner than the others. As far as what it is, though... Right. I'm leaving. Gods, these people are amateurs. This village is about as secure as your granny's underwear. Not a single watchman at his post. It's worse than I'd imagined. I'll deal with this, Captain. Good. I'm counting on you. Remember, if you screw this up, we'll all be joining the ranks of the Dead Walker army as soon as their scouts find this place. You wanted the Freeborn Blades to help the villagers. Is that still happening? As long as we have to stay here, yes. Why? The villagers told me about a beast. I have to find its lair. Hawk talked to me about that a while ago. He said he'd found some suspicious-looking tracks that led back to the northern swamps. I'll go and follow the tracks. Where's Hawk? No idea. I sent him off to scout that part of the swamp, but he hasn't reported back yet. Captain, I wanted to ask... Do you really think we should be trusting these Red Scribes? Vulcan. I'm not going to try and make this pretty. These are tough times. Thanks to this cursed war, our list of potential clients is shrinking faster than my dick when I jump into an ice bath. I get it that after what happened in the temple, you'd like to send them all packing. This whole demon business is... complicated. But we are mercenaries after all is said and done. We're not a charity. We're only as good as our clients. And you know... Even if they did screw things up back there, 
They were right to try and find some way to beat the Ice Lords. What's the alternative? Lie down and wait to freeze? Thanks to them, we all nearly bought it back at the temple. I'm not even convinced it was an accident. You have a point. And since we don't want to finish up as a pile of bodies under a snowdrift, we're going to keep a sharp eye on them from now on. Do you think the company is going to make it? Of course. The Blades have always come through. They've existed for more than two centuries, and they won't give up now. Not during my watch. But to tell you the truth, we're not looking too fresh. Not with the losses we took back at the temple. And as for new recruits, it's been what? A year or more since we found anyone worthwhile. Most of us were recruited when the war began, and there aren't many of us left. The only available recruits now are either cowards, deserters, or kids. If we're gonna hold this village, we're going to have to do it using the locals, even though most of them look like they couldn't organize a party in a brewery. As soon as we've recovered a bit, we'll break camp and head for Carol Pass. I already sent some of the Blades ahead to see if they could find any new recruits. With a bit of luck, they'll come up with something better than one-armed, no-legged trolley rollers. Why did we fall back to the swamp? The Red Scribes knew of this place and said that we'd be safe here for a while. And apart from a few repulsive beasties creeping around outside the walls, it's actually quite peaceful. I don't think I'd buy a house here, though, would you? So we'll heal our wounded, try and learn what's happening to you, and then get the hell out of here. Captain, just fought a duel with Ranville, the guardian of the village. And before you start yelling about wasted energy, I want you to know that it was him that insisted on it. He's one hell of a fighter. He hits you like he was chopping down a tree, and he can take a blow and shake it off. He wants to join the Blades. Hmm. I have the feeling that every new recruit I take on these days is headed straight for the cemetery. But considering the losses we've suffered, I suppose I can't refuse. Bring him here to me. I'll check him out. The knight heard talk of a troubling event that happened during the meeting between the mercenary and the steward. Yeah, the short version is that I have a demon living inside of me. A demon? The knight has never heard of such a creature. Should he be worried? I don't think there's anything you can do to help, but I have to get this thing out of me. I just can't risk keeping it. The Knight does not possess the requisite knowledge for this, but he will be honored to help search for it. The scribes are working on it. It's their job, after all. The Knight does not completely trust these scribes, and he suggests that his friend do likewise. I talked with the captain. He wants to see you. Come on, follow me. Vulcan. I do love our little chats, but shouldn't you be doing something? Captain, this is Ranville. He talks funny, but he can kick ass. So, it's Ranval, is it? That is the knight's name. How can he prove his valor to you? All righty then. I'm glad you warned me that he talks a bit funny. Right then, laddie. All you have to do is fight a duel with me. And do your best. It will be an honor to fight with a man who they say has never been beaten. If you think you can flatter me into letting you off lightly, forget about it. Like I said, do your best. The knight hopes that he will be the first to vanquish him. He will not hold back his blows. That's more like it. Let's see what you've got, laddie. <sighs> not bad. Not bad at all. Welcome to the Freeborn Blades, my boy. We were starting to be seriously short of fighters worthy of the name, and you fight like a man. Though you're a ways off from beating me. Vulcan! He's your recruit. You can take care of him. Go on. Away with you. Welcome to the Freeborn Blades, friend. Don't take it so hard. The entry fight is a humiliation we all had to go through. Me included. The captain deserves his post and his reputation. He is an exceptional warrior. The knight will be proud to serve under his orders. 
After such a combat, the knight will need to rest for a moment. He asks that his friend, and now brother, come to find him when he has need. Okay. See you later. Mr. Vulcan, what brings you here? The captain wants me to help your village. You got a job I can do? With our shortages of food and fighting men, our worn-out equipment and the growing lines at the healing house, I cannot deny our village is sorely in need of help. Sadly, I fear that these are not the sort of problems you are used to dealing with, unless I'm much mistaken. Maybe I'll surprise you. So what's the problem with the healing house? Quite simply, Mirana cannot keep up. She spends every waking minute giving out supplies to the refugees and refuses to admit that she cannot help everyone. She thinks she's fooling me. I have heard rumors that her food stock is running low. Unsurprisingly, the crowds outside are becoming restless. I believe they wish to continue handing out our food reserves as though they were unlimited. This is not the case, and thus, it is not an option. So, you want someone to put her down? Why, I never suggested any such thing. I just wish she would see reason, for all our sakes. But I have asked nothing of you. I was merely answering your question. Your guards... How can I put this? At first, I thought they were disobeying orders. Now I think maybe they don't even understand them. If you're stupid and incompetent, you should be digging turnips, not taking care of security. You're beginning to worry me. Is it really that bad? Are you kidding me? The state of their weapons is enough to make you cry. Maybe they'd be good for splitting logs. Personally, I'm not capable of judging the aptitude of our sentries, but their poor results speak for themselves. Doubtless, you should share your observations with Mason, the Chief of the Watch. I should warn you, however, that he is of a somewhat stubborn nature. Wouldn't be the first I've seen. I need the reports about this beast that attacked the villagers. I fear I am unable to be of help. I am still not entirely convinced that it even exists. All I know is that several villagers have vanished. One villager is at present in the doctor's care, following a supposed encounter with the said beast. These swamps are crawling with dangers. There is nothing to suggest anything out of the ordinary. The refugees are always inventing horror stories in an attempt to force us to open our gates and let them inside. It might be worth checking it out. You said you lost one of your patrols, right? That is so. You should speak with Randvol. He was most anxious to go out and hunt the beast down, but we needed him here. Now that we have more able bodies to guard our gates, I imagine he would be keen to pick up the scent once more. I've got a few questions I'd like to ask about this village. I imagine there are few who are better placed than myself to answer them. How come it's you that's running the show here? <laughs> what a question. Because, my friend, someone has to. You imagine I'm doing this for my amusement, perhaps? Doubtless you wish it were someone else. The Chief of the Watch has trouble organizing three peasants. Our dear apothecary is evidently keen to give succor to any and every poor soul who wanders into the healing house. And regardless of your reputation, the people of this village would never trust outsiders such as yourself or even the Red Scribes. So yes, it is indeed I who command here, the one-time steward of the hunting lodge of Valvanor, now leader of this... shithole. Well, hell. I'm glad we got that cleared up. What can you tell me about the people of Valvanor? Before the war, there were just a few families here. Hunters and craftsmen, mostly. These days, they survive as best they can, husbanding their animals and digging up the puny vegetables they've managed to grow. Few dare to venture outside the walls. These woods are fruitful, but more perilous than ever before, and most of these folk know nothing of arms. But you've got your guards. 
They hardly qualify as an armed militia. Of the few that remain, most are sturdy farmers whom we have entrusted with some kind of weapon. Most of the real fighters left the village as soon as war broke out. The others died while out on patrol. The only one left here with any real experience is Mason, the head of the guard. Sadly, the man is a walking beer keg who could not give a dog's fart for what his men are about. Who are all those refugees that you're keeping outside the walls? The war with the Ice Lords has driven many from their homes and villages. Alas, it would seem that some of them found their way here. I have tried to accommodate as many as we can and provide as much comfort as possible, but I fear we can do little more. We are reaching the end of our reserves, and relations between the refugees and the villagers are becoming strained. The refugees can all be dead weight. Some of them have got to be useful. Oh, if only. Believe me, I would be the first to welcome them. These peasants have been fleeing from town to town and from camp to camp for months. The best and strongest of them perished in battles somewhere along the way. I must deal with the leftovers. I put the biggest of them in the watch, but they are of little use. The healing house. It's a pretty good thing for your village, huh? If you say so. As time has gone by, the healing house has drawn refugees to the swamps in ever greater numbers and dissuaded some malingerers from returning to their families. When it opened its doors a year ago, the sense of relief was palpable. It was run by a couple, an elf doctor and his apothecary wife, who clearly were no strangers to the healing arts. Thanks to them, we were spared many plagues. But as the war dragged on, the endless tide of refugees continued to flow through our gates until we could harbor no more. Six months ago, our worst nightmares were fulfilled. Our elf doctor fell ill and died. Since then, Mirana has soldiered on without rest, alone. I do not know how much longer she can keep going. The refugees just keep on coming, and I fear that poor woman is beginning to crumble under the strain. It's not surprising. I need a blacksmith. Do you have one here? With none more qualified, I asked Asiel to take over the village forge. I suppose I should warn you, he's quite a tricky character. He has a huge ego and is stubborn as an ox. Before the war, he was a sort of artist. He crafted jewelry and sculptures from metal. Despite running the forge, one could hardly call him a blacksmith. But he's the only one here who had even the vaguest notion of how to repair a shovel or straighten a blade. We'll talk again later. My goodness, let's see. You're not pissing blood, you're not vomiting your guts out. Both legs are in place and they seem to be holding you upright. Congratulations, it looks like you'll pull through. And now you'll excuse me, but I have other miracles to accomplish, and not much time to devote to people in your condition. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I'd like to speak with you. Are you wounded? No. Are you a refugee dying of starvation? Hey, I'm a mercenary. We're always hungry. Why don't you go roast a Chris alien and come back and see me when you're twisted in pain? Haven't you anything better to do than bother me? Hang on a sec. The steward himself sent me here to give you a hand. Wonderful. I've been after him for months to get me some help, and he sends me an armed ape. You practice medicine, I presume? Your tools seem rather barbaric. The tools are fine. That's not to say I don't get a little barbaric sometimes. Only sometimes? Believe me, I've already used them to do a little surgery on a few evil tongues, and nobody ever complained once. So be it. If you're as gifted as that, I guess I have nothing to lose. In fact, there is something that you could doubtless do for me. I'm worried about my assistant, Heyman. I haven't seen him for a while now, and I fear he might have gone into the swamps to look for the plants I need. We're forced to venture further and further in to find the plants we need. With all that's been going on lately, I forbade him from going back out alone, but the boy is nothing if not stubborn. Uh, stubborn? Yeah, I hate people like that. Please find him. He's a good boy. He's done nothing but help others since he arrived. 
Without him, the House of Healing would be a house of death. If I'm gonna be slogging through the swamps anyway, might as well take a look around and try to bring back the plants you need too, right? You got any drawings or descriptions? Yes, that's a good idea. I would be grateful to you. But above all, try to bring back my assistant Heyman in one piece. He is your priority. For the rest, basically, I need food, medicinal herbs, and of course, I wouldn't say no to a few pre-prepared potions. All of our stock seems to disappear so quickly. I'll give you the parchment that I made for Heyman to help you recognize the specimens I need. He knows them by heart now, after so many trips. Right. Plants, potions, chow, and one assistant. Uh, if I come across any elven tea, would you like a cup of that, too? That would be lovely. Let's talk about your healing house. I found you a few health potions. Here, I hope these will help cover your needs for a little while. They will prove very useful, I promise you, and thank you. Where could I find some food for you? Sadly, there isn't much choice. You have to go look for it in the swamps, unless you want to bargain for it with a steward. Perhaps he will be more generous with a mercenary than with a simple apothecary. I'd like some information about the village and its inhabitants. So what do you think of the steward? Oh, don't get me started on that. Too late if you ask me. If I were you, I'd be wary of him. He is not as honorable as he would have you believe. Know that before the war, he was just a lackey, bowing and scraping before all the people of power that passed by. Due to a superior's mistake, he thinks he's in charge now. He's a latecomer, nothing but an opportunist, ready to do anything to keep his little piece of power. I've had the misfortune of experiencing his sense of priorities. When he no longer has a use for you, he lets you know you're not welcome. I can't say I disagree with you there. This asshole treats everybody like his personal slaves. For the moment, he treats you well because you serve his needs. This might not always be true, and then your lives will be threatened. He'd go that far? I didn't found the House of Healing alone. It was with my husband, Ron. He was not a great warrior, nor a renowned strategist. His only gift was for healing. He was my teacher before becoming my husband. The steward welcomed us with open arms. We took care of his men, his villagers. Then the refugees started arriving in greater numbers. Too many for Shambriad, who ended up closing the gates and pretending that these people simply didn't exist. Ron was furious. He tried to make him understand that he would heal everyone, no matter what. And if the self-proclaimed leader of the village wasn't capable of taking care of anyone other than himself, that he would do it. A few days later, I came back from the swamps to discover Ron in agony in the healing house. He had been poisoned. You think this was the work of the steward? Who else would have reason to kill him? Everyone loved him and counted on him. Chambriad thought that without him, the healing house would close and that the number of refugees would diminish naturally. Unfortunately for him, I will continue my husband's good work even unto my dying breath. He gave me an even greater reason to keep going. This healing house is a waste of time and resources. These people are but dead weight. Who are these refugees you're helping? They are the outcasts of the war. Those who didn't have the privilege of dying in combat or who lack knowledge of the arts of the forge. No one wants them. If I don't help them, nobody will. You're doing the right thing. Taking care of them is good for everybody's morale. The ones who do the fighting want to know they aren't doing it for nothing, and that their people won't be abandoned while they're gone. That is far from the only reason. But I'm very happy to hear you say it. What did you do before the war? Before the war? Please don't tell me you're naive enough to believe that this war only started ten years ago. That's what everybody says. I come from Shorolin. A faraway land in the north, that the Ice Lords probably wiped off the map some time ago. Because no one is left to write the history books, other than a fanatical cult more interested in arcane magic than in human science or medicine. The fact remains that the war is far more ancient than that. For as long as I can remember, I have always known war. 
I was only just learning to walk when Marshal Winters invaded my homeland. I have heard of this Ice Lord. Winters the Bloodthirsty. I wandered along the main roads for years, always heading further south, staying just ahead of the advancing Deadwalkers, first with my sister and a family of neighbors, then just with my sister, then all alone, until the day I met the man who would become my husband, a remarkable elf who taught me how to heal and how to love and help those near me. But after years of fleeing and ending up here in this isolated village so in need of healers, we decided to put down roots. Roan died eight months ago, leaving me alone and in charge of the house of healing that we had built together. Have you heard any rumors about a beast wandering around in the marshes? They are not rumors. There is something in these marshes, and I have a patient in a coma that confirms it. Something? What does that mean? Where can I find it? I don't know exactly what it is. The wounds don't resemble anything seen around here before. What you seek is large, powerful, and obviously has enormous claws at its disposal. The wounded man was found west of the swamps, crawling towards the village. If you really wish to fall upon that beast, that would be a good place to start. But bear in mind the possibility that it may be the beast which falls upon you. I'll take my leave. See you later.